All right, everyone. Thank you for being here today. My name is, as I mentioned before, my name is David. Um, I'm one of the student recruitment advisors here at the University of Calgary. I work closely with the homeschool students to see how we can help them get, um, like, help them find the right fit for them in terms of applying to university or for secondary institution. And I'm glad you're all here today. Um, we're just here to show you a little bit about what the University of Calgary offers as a whole, um, what's the, what the programs we offer, student life, student experiences, academic experiences, and much more. Like I mentioned, if you do have a question or anything, you can put it in the Q&A um, portion, Q&A portion at the bottom of your screen there, where you have the um, options. And I'll be happy to answer them right after the presentation, and we'll be happy to help you out as well too, okay? All right, let's get into it. So before anything, we would like to acknowledge the lands we're currently on. The University of Calgary is located in the heart of Southern Alberta, and we, acknowledge, we both acknowledge and pay tribute to the traditional territories of the Treaty 7, which includes the Blackfoot Confederacy, comprised, comprised of the Sisica, Pekani, and the Kanai First Nation, the Zustina First Nation, and the Stony Nakoda, including the Chiniki, Bearspore, and Good Stony First Nation. The city of Calgary is also home to the Métis Nation, of Alberta Region 3. Okay, all right. Uh, I don't know how many of us uh, from our chat today, from our presence today, I know some of us maybe living outside of Alberta or living maybe close by. So this is just a few facts about the province of Alberta. Um, as of now, we can see that we have the average rent in Alberta is around 1,266 and it's one of the decent places to live in. The income taxes, we also see that we minimum after tax is the income highest in the country as well. So it is a lot of paid opportunities for people in Alberta. And we also offer zero provincial taxes too. So for anyone thinking about living in Alberta, when you buy things like, when you buy like things from a supermarket or like get a paid service, we usually have like 5% on, um, on anything you buy compared to other provinces who have a higher taxes, like for Ontario has like around 12%, Saskatchewan has 11%. So we have a lower um, tax, sales tax, because we have zero provincial sales tax as well too. So living in Alberta, we have also a lot of, we have five UNESCO World Heritage Sites. We have um, six major ski parks, including the Banff area everyone talks about. And yeah, that's a few things about Alberta we can mention. Uh, let's now go in. Let's now go a little bit more into the map to the, the city of Calgary. So as of now, it is not the seven most livable city in the North America. So this needs to be. I forgot to change that, but this is going to be the seven most livable city in North America. It is Canada's sunniest major city, which means that we have an average of seven three hundred thirty three days of sun in Calgary. So that means even though during the winter months, we usually have higher Sunday. We usually have like a lot of sun to help us, even though it's a little bit chilly, but it all that sun helps for our mood, for like just uh, like just going out to ski and all of those kind of things. We're also home to 17 of the top 100 restaurants in Canada. And we also not, we have also North America's most extensive pathway and bikeway network. So anyone who likes to bike, who likes to walk around, who likes to run, we have a lot of running space for you to do that as well too. We also have, in terms of working in Calgary, we have the second highest volunteer national rate. So if you love volunteering, helping people as well, we have a lot of opportunities for that in the city of Calgary. We also have the fastest growing tech market in Canada. So the, tech, the, the world is always going towards more tech industries and all of those kind of things. We have more fintechs, we have financial technology, we have a lot more AI technology um, building also here. And we also have a lot of um, computer um, science, software engineering companies that are growing more and more in the city of Calgary. As you can see in the downtown area in the background, that's it comprises a lot of tech, tech companies in the market as well too. We also have the second highest number of small businesses per capita, which means that we have a lot of entrepreneurs and a lot of small businesses growing up in the, in, uh, in Calgary. So we are one, we have a lot of entrepreneurs and the city always encourages that in such a way that we want more and more people to start businesses, start small businesses and start like opportunities as well too. So that's just a little bit about the city of Calgary, but let's take that we're in the downtown area now. Let's take a 20 minute ride to the University of Calgary. So the University of Calgary is a relatively young university compared to most universities like the U of T's who was well founded in the 1900s. We were just founded in 1966. So we're just about 50 something years, 57, close to 57 years of age in terms of, um, in terms of as a university. So 
We also have 28,000 undergraduate students. So an undergraduate student is a student who is coming from high school or another college and is taking their first degree or their pre-degree. So we have a lot of undergraduate students from all around the world. We have a diverse community as well. And we have five campuses for which four of them are located in the city of Calgary and one is located in a different country in the Middle East called Qatar. We also have 14 faculties for which 10 of the faculties are gonna be for students in the undergraduate level. We're Canada's entrepreneurial university. I did mention that the city of Calgary has a lot of small businesses, entrepreneurs, and all of that. The, we, the University of Calgary and the city of Calgary work together to create more um, entrepreneurs, more small businesses, and we are a very, very innovative university. We want more people to be able to, want more people to actually like go into, um, to be more innovative, our motto as a our motto right now is to start something. We have a lot of innovation. We have a lot of um, thinking. We want, to, we want the mind to be working as much as possible. And that's where we're Canada's entrepreneurial university. We're also a very trusted research institution. We have a 94% after graduation employment rate. That means that the likelihood of you getting a job with the University of Calgary degree is quite high. So 94%, that means job opportunities are opened up to you because of your the, uh, the degree that you have from the University of Calgary. I have a 95% undergraduate retention rate. So that means the likelihood of a first year coming to their coming into their first year, going to their second year, third year finishing off is usually high because we have a lot of support on campus. We have a lot of um, academic support. We have a lot of um, life, life support as well. So we have a lot of things that help students to want to stay ahead. We have a lot of um, student life opportunities for students as well because we want to we develop the overall human being as a whole in the University of Calgary. Okay, let's now go and have a quick snapshot of what we have on the University of Calgary. This is a map of our campus here. To the right side of the campus there, you can see the LRT station. That is a dedicated bus and train loop for the University of Calgary. That means that you can access it whenever it's available, as you can access it as, as many times as possible. And it's also uh, available to all University of Calgary students for free. This is because in your tuition is included at what we call a bus pass. So you can go access the LRC station anytime it's available, go downtown, go towards the north side, go towards the south side, go uh, like you can add, you can access the entirety of the city of Calgary using the LRC station because of your dedicated bus pass. And you can use that to go anywhere. You can go downtown to get some, some food or you can go just around. And that is available for you as a University of Calgary student. To the center of the campus here, you can see the McEwen Student Center. I call that the hub of the entire campus because it is like a mini mall. We have a, we have a dedicated um, it's like we have a dedicated food court that has many lines of um fast food restaurants. We also have a fine dining. We also have a pop star restaurant. We also have little we have shops as well too. We also have a lot of student support on in that building as well too. For instance, just a few student support that we have on there. We have the student success center. So for anyone thinking about academic advising, writing support, if you need help in, help in writing essays, if you need peer-led study sessions, this is a wonderful place for you in terms of academic work. They will help you figure out um, questions and answers. There will always be people who will help you in terms of studying for courses that maybe that you have, that you may have little, little issues with as well too. In terms of also wellness, we have also in, on the, in the Mercurian Student Center, we have the student wellness services. On that, in that building, we have a dedicated um, family doctor as well too. We have a dedicated dietitian. We have a dedicated counselor on campus. We also have a dedicated um, eye doctor, which is the optometrist. We also have a dedicated dentist on campus, a dentist on campus too. So all that is available for you as a University of Calgary student. You can go in there. You don't even need to leave the campus to actually like get you know, help yourself and like help when you need like when you need um help in your health. That is available for you as well too. We also have a dedicated pharmacy on campus as well too. So if you need to get like you want to get a medicine or you want to get like supplements, that is all available for you there on the University of Calgary campus. A few other things is the Center for Career and Personal Development. If you need help in writing your resumes, cover letters, preparing for an interview, this is a wonderful place because they hold webinars, they hold um functions. There's, there's also an open space for students to go ask questions to actually make themselves better in terms of career and personal development as well too. Okay, let's just go back a little bit to the map. Let's go right down towards the residences. So when we talk about residences, we're talking about living on campus. 
So we have over um, 11, um, we have over 11 um, residential buildings for students. And one thing about us is that in our first, in your first year, we know you're living home for the first time. We know you're probably going to, you're probably like having, it's the first time on your own. So we do guarantee you first year residence as a University of Calgary student. So if you're coming from high school, if you're coming to your first year, you're guaranteed residence in your first year. That means that you, all you need to do is just apply by May 1st, 2024, the applications, to get into University of Calgary is usually is, is very is separate from the applications to live on campus. So if you apply by May 1st, 2024, you're guaranteed residence in your first year. We do have two forms of residence for you. We have the shared accommodations and the single accommodations. To the right, to the top right side there, you can see the two forms of accommodations that we have over there. We have um the single the shared accommodation, which is um it is the traditional style that everyone is um going to be able to get to. And we have the single accommodation. The single accommodation is usually given out on a lottery basis. So that means computer randomly selects a few people out of the bunch to be able to choose that. So it's not really, it's not, it's it's not guaranteed, but we do guarantee you residence at least in the shared accommodation. The shared accommodation, you can decide that uh, you and your friend, let's say both of you decide to apply to University of Calgary, for instance, both of you can become a roommate in your first year. Or we also pair you up with someone who has the same needs and desires and pair with the roommate that you can live peacefully with as well too. Included also in your residence, on, included also living on campus, it's your, it's your um, all you get to eat meal plans. So like I said, first year you're leaving school for the first time, you're leaving home for the first time. We know that we want you to also maintain a good diet and have good food options as well too, which is why we have the all you get to eat meal plan. In the all you get to eat meal plan, you can go into the dining area, which is this picture in the middle right here. We go in there, you can grab as many food as, as much food as you want. You can go in there to um, everyone like study as well too. You can go in there as many times as you want because you have the all you get to eat meal plan. The average student in the University of Calgary goes into that landing, the, the dining area at least six times a day because they can go grab a snack, they can go grab a good meal, they can go grab a dessert as many as, as many times as they want to go into there. And also we have the seven day, if you the seven day all you get to email plan, which is usually Monday to Sunday, or the five day all you get to email plan from Monday to Friday, which you're able to go, which for which you can do like Saturday to Sunday, you can go learn how to cook, you can go off campus to go to restaurants and much more. But well, living on residence is a wonderful experience for students. It's very, very safe. It's also a very wonderful short walk to campus. I mean, you don't need to wake up and catch the bus or do anything. You can just wake up as 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 wake up early, wake up as wake up as late as possible to be able to get to classes on time. And it's also a wonderful place to actually meet new people, meet new friends in your first year because you have a lot of resident events, activities, team digit, dinners as much as possible. For me myself, when I was in university. Most of the friends I have now that are my lifelong friends, I met them all in residence. And it's a wonderful experience for someone in your first year going into university. All right, let's talk about a lot of uh, uh, other uh, opportunities in terms of student experiences. We can talk about the Get Active program. So we have a lot of facilities that we have in terms of sports. We're the number one sports science school in the whole of North America. And we have a lot of standardized sporting um, um sporting uh, facilities such as the aquatic center which has an olympic style swimming pool we have the fitness center which is a two-floor gym that has a running that has a running track on the top on the top floor as we can see in the bottom left picture on your screen we also have a gymnastic center we also have an olympic oval which holds the fastest which has the world's fastest ice so in 1988 um, the city of calgary hosted the winter olympics and the olympic oval hosted the, the games and in, and in fact, that um, Olympic Oval has stayed on our campus. A lot of athletes come over to train on that on ice. And we have a lot, you, you can always see someone, we have seen like teams from all over Europe come over here to train on that ice as well too. We also have the largest racket center in Canada as well too. We also have an outdoor center, which has a climbing and boarding area. It's also a place where students can go rent equipment like kayaks, running shoes, and much more. One beautiful thing about this is everything and the facilities except the outdoor center is included in your tuition and you can access them for free as a University of Calgary student, student. Including the outdoor center, what it is is that you can access those things, the outdoor center, the equipment, you can rent them at a discounted price as a University of Calgary student as well too. So 
those facilities are available for you to get active. If you want to do more running, if you want to, if you want to just en like enjoy yourself as well too, there's also intramural sports teams. You and your friends can decide to play the same sports together. There's fitness classes. There's also sports clubs, including like clubs. We have over 300 clubs on campus. If you are interested in baking, if you're interested in sports, if you're interested in um, esports, you're interested in gaming, those all, we have a lot of clubs for you to choose from that you can choose in terms of your niche, in terms of your culture, in terms of anything at all. And if you decide that there, there's a club, there's not a club for you, you and 10 other students can start a new club as well in the University of Calgary. Now, if you decide you want to play sports on, uh, at, on, on as an athletic student, this is an option for you as well too. So if you decide that you want to play as a student athlete, these are the sports we have for you. You can decide to um, reach out to our coaches in the dinos, you can scan the barcode and you can tell them about the sports you want to play and the opportunities like in terms of like gay, um, like tryouts and opportunities and scholarships as well too as a University of Calgary student. So the barcode in the middle over there or you go to godinos.com, look for the sports that you're interested in and you can reach out to the coaches directly as well. Okay, all right. Let's talk about faculties in terms of um, programs that are offered in the University of Calgary. We have the Haskane School of Business. We have the Faculty of Scientists, Faculty of Social Work, School of Architecture, um, Faculty of Kinesiology, the Faculty of Nursing, Faculty of Art, Cummings School of Medicine, and the Schulich School of Engineering. So in the chat, I would now request if you have any questions about any of those programs, you can type them in there and I can answer them as well too, but I will do a general overview of all the programs. And if you're interested in anyone, you can let me know and I can explain further for you as well too. Okay, so you can put that in the chat and we can answer those questions for you as well. Okay, let's get into it. So let's start with the School of Architecture, Planning and Landscape. So for anyone thinking about getting into architecture, architecture is a program which you can go directly from studying in high school to uh to learn architecture you have to do it in the, for you to become a full-time architect you have to do an undergrad which or the pre-degree which we do offer we also have a master you now have to do the masters in architecture to become a full-time architect so it's undergrad or pre-degree um masters in architecture then you can become a full-time architect the program that we help for students who are doing who want to do a pre-degree is the design and city innovation program it helps you get that base level understanding of what it means to be an architect architect, you're able to learn about um, design programs and what it is to build in the cities as well too. That is what it is about, um, the Bachelor of Design and City Innovation. One beautiful thing about this program, it is very, very helpful for people who want to study architecture in that it counts towards one year of a master's program. So if you take this four-year program in the Design and City Innovation, it counts towards one year of a master's program and you're able to become a full-time architect in one year less in terms of time. We have a lot of programs in the Faculty of Arts if you're interested in history, if you're interested in international relations, if you're also interested in becoming a psychologist, if you want to work with people as well too. The Faculty of Arts is more about humanities-based um, study. If you're interested in dance, if you're interested in fine arts, there's also those opportunities for you. It's also, if you want to go into things like journalism, you have the communications and media studies. If you want to do more um, film, if you want to learn how to like produce films as well too. This program is wonderful in that you're able to do two years in a university in a secondary institution called SAIT, which is also in the University of Calgary, which is also in the city of Calgary, pardon me. And also you do two years in the University of Calgary. So it could be, you can do, you're gonna do it in two, those two different um, institutions. And it's wonderful because you get a lot of hands-on experience to, pre to prepare you for the industry as much as possible. If you're interested in becoming, if you want to do things in music, you can do the composition, which is where you learn how to music, learn how to write music. You can learn how to perform music during the performance and integrated studies can be a combination of both as well too. We also, in terms of anyone who is thinking about doing law, for instance, the, the Faculty of Arts is also a good program for students who want to do that. So what it is, is that um, if you're thinking about doing law, law is also a program you can go directly from high school to study. You have to do a pre-degree and undergrad. You have to write the LSAT, which is a law school attitude test exams. And you have to write, um, you have to you cannot apply into law school, which, for, which when you're done, you're able to be called to bar and become a lawyer. So for programs like that in the pre-degree and undergrad that we recommend for students who want to do um, program, um, uh, want to do law, we have the Law and Society program that is available for students. If you want to do more in political science, it's an option. If you want to do sociology, sociology is also a good program in that you can take what we call a concentration towards 
criminal justice, criminology, uh, criminal deviant, social justice as well too. If you want to do things towards like, you can also take like um, a psychology program. So for us, we do have two pathways for people who want to do psychology, for instance. Psychology, we have the Bachelor of Arts, which is more a humanities-based study, and the Bachelor of Science, which is more of a science biological-based study in terms of that. And we recommend the, the choice to be able to choose between the Bachelor of Arts in Psychology or Bachelor of Science in Psychology. It depends heavily on the program. It depends heavily on um, what your plan in the long term is as well too. Okay, let's just get on to other programs that we have. In the University of Calgary, we have the Work on School of Education. If you want to become a teacher in a school, for instance, we have two pathways for students. We have the four-year or the five-year program. Four-year, most programs that we have are in the four-year and the five-year as well too. What it is is that we allow you to teach, uh, to choose a subject that you want to teach, and we also allow you to teach the, to choose the level. Let's say, for instance, now I want to be an English language teacher. I can do. I can decide that I want to teach maybe at elementary, secondary, or K to twelve. But let's say I decide I want to teach elementary English. I can do a four-year program in which I will be able to graduate a Bachelor of Education that I will be able to also do what we call a practicum around the fourth year. I will go into a school, teach students, get experience, get mentorship. But when I graduate after the four-year program, I get a Bachelor of Education that allows me to teach at any level and any subject. So those limits of only English and elementary level are taken off after you graduate as a University of Calgary student. So that is one thing about that. But it's also the five-year program where you're able to still do the same thing in the four-year program, but at this time you graduate with two degrees. So you graduate with a Bachelor of Education that allows you to teach at any level at any subject and a Bachelor of English, Bachelor of Arts in English, pardon me. So what it is is that you com combine both you can go into a school and it, it gives you the opportunity to have a good higher starting salary. And let's say you decide you don't want to be a teacher anymore. You can use that English, um, the second degree in Bachelor of Arts in English to maybe go into journalism, to be able to, to go into creative writing as much as possible. So it also it, it gives you that option to do that. So there's also the four year and the five year degree, as we see on the left side there. You can decide to choose the subject and you can decide to do the four or five year in the level that you want to teach in. But in the end of it all, you get a Bachelor of Education that allows you to teach in any subject and any level as you desire. Okay. We also have the Skin School of Business. We do not offer a strict business degree because we, we offer what we call a Bachelor of Commerce. It is a more employable degree in that you could get jobs in different in those in any of this uh in any of the aspects in the bachelor of commerce so you can get a job in accounting business analytics business technology it's a bachelor of commerce that allows you to get a wider experience you're able to learn uh, learn in all aspects of commerce but you can also choose what we but in your third and fourth year you begin to choose what we call a concentration so you can decide to take more courses towards business for instance if that's your major course of study if you want to take more courses towards finance you can take more courses towards finance the whole point of this is that in the end of it all you graduate with a bachelor of commerce that can still get a, a job in different other areas our bachelor of commerce is really really recognized but like for instance if you want to become an accountant the start the chartered accountant um program allows you to, our Bachelor of Commerce is very recognized for our program as well for becoming an accountant. In the end of it all, you're able to graduate a Bachelor of Commerce that can get you a job in different ranges of the industry in commerce as well. Okay, we now talk about engineering. So our engineering program, is, we have the Bachelor of Science in Engineering program. One thing about engineering program is that we understand that there's a wide variety of options for people to choose from, but in your first year, everyone takes the same courses, the same pro, the same courses, everyone does what we call a common first year. That means that you take the same courses, you have a base level understanding of engineering, and you're also able to get a lot of, um, you're also able to understand and choose from the subjects you're I'm teaching for. For instance, now, um, I've heard people, I've seen students who decided, who thought they wanted to do mechanical engineering, but they decided to do electrical after their first year because they took a wide variety of courses and saw that electrical was their strength. So the whole point of this is to be able to see which one works for you, whether it be electrical, whether it be um, uh, mechanical, civil, and to also have a base level understanding of engineering. That's why we have the common first year. Then you begin to specialize in your second to fourth year. You can specialize in any of the lists that we have on that, on, on, under the Bachelor of Engineering, or Bachelor of Science in Engineering. And you're also able to do what we call an internship, which is a period of 12 to 16 months where you go into the engineering industry, get some experience, get some um, get some uh, mentorship, hands-on work, and also get paid because it's a paid internship for students as well too. Okay, 
So that's just a little about the engineering program. If you need specifics, you can add the clean up, always give us a, a question, put your questions in the Q&A as well too. Okay, Faculty of Science. So we have a lot of programs in the Faculty of Science here on the left-hand side here. If you're thinking about more astrophysics, if you're thinking about like um, astronomy, quantum physics, that's a good program. Biochemistry is a research, is an honors program. If you're thinking that honors programs means that you're gonna do what we call a research and you write a thesis at the end of your degree. So that's what it is about that. For programs in the Faculty of Science, people use the programs in the Faculty of Science if they want to do things like going into medicine, if you want to become a vet, vet if you want to become a veterinary vet, vet, vet med as well too. Those are programs that you they help you get in the, they help you prepare for the um programs ahead. So like for instance, now if anyone wants to become a doctor, for instance, right, you want to do uh you're going to be able to do like uh biochemistry, for instance, biological scientists, natural scientists, chemistry, those are good options that prepare you for medicine. Medicine is also a program you can go directly into. You have to be able to do a, a pre-degree, which is the program you have in the faculty of science. We also offer uh with the then. After you've done the pre-degree or the undergrad in the Faculty of Science, you write the L, you write the MCAT, which is a medical school exams, and you're now also able to do uh, apply to med school right after as well. So that's for options in the Faculty of Science. If you want to do more computer science work in terms of coding, writing languages, computer science offers a wide variety of options for students. You can also begin to choose around your third and fourth year what we call a concentration, where you can take more courses towards a particular aspect of computer science. For instance, you can take more courses towards like AI designs. You can take more courses towards um, uh, uh, Intel, like graphic designs. If you want to take more courses towards software development, if you want to take more courses towards um, towards cybersecurity. So those options are offered for you in, in the computer science. It's up to you to choose what concentration because in your first few year, first two, three years, you're taking general courses and you see which one you want to study more and it's for you to have more understanding before you ever get into the industry as well too okay let's move over to the faculty of kinesiology i didn't mention at the beginning that we're number one sports science sports medicine school in the whole of north america and we are top 10 in the entire world our kinesiology program is embodies that where our kinesiology program is very very trusted in that we have worked with top companies top um, companies and top industries top in the sports industry, for instance. We have worked with Lululemon to design the new running shoes. We designed hockey sticks for teams. We designed um, we designed a pair of cleats for famous soccer player, David Beckham. We've also designed, uh, we've also, we're also currently working with the NFL in terms of concussion, concussion research as well too. So Faculty of Kinesiology offers that opportunity for students. If you want to go into things like sports medicine, if you want to become a physio, if you want to become a, uh, if you want to become a coach, if you want to become also a phys ed teacher, this is also a good program for students who want to go into that. Um, if you're thinking about um, becoming a chiropractor as well, too, these are good options for people who want to go into that as well. If you want to design these hockey sticks, design these running shoes, perform a lot of sports medicine, like sports, um, like also like studying the human body and how it moves in terms of that, the Faculty of Kinesiology is also a good program for that as well, too. Now let's move into nursing. The nursing program is a wonderful one in that it is very, very immersive. It immerses you, it puts you into the space of being a nurse from the get-go. What it means is that you're gonna be working with a lot of mannequins that will simulate real life hospital scenarios. So that means that whenever, it, when it's time to get into a hospital, you already have the brain work though, that, that you also have the like, you also have the like capabilities because you work with these mannequins that could simulate different uh, hospital-like scenarios. That way you're not all like strong, like you're not like thrown into the deep as much, but you also have that understanding of what it means to be a nurse. We also, in your fourth year, you're gonna do what we call a practicum, which is included in your um program. That means you're gonna go into a hospital, get some experience, get some hands-on work. You're gonna work with a nurse. You're gonna get that experience that will help you. And right after you're gonna be, you know, you're gonna be able to graduate and you need to write the registered nursing exams that will not allow you to work in the nursing industry as well too. The nursing program is also a <coughs> sorry. It's also a program for students who are thinking of doing medicine as well too, because you get a lot of hospital experience for that as well too. So that's a suggestion for anyone who's thinking about doing medicine. We have a common school of medicine. This is our medicine. Pro this is our medical program, but and at the undergrad level, like I mentioned, you can go directly into medicine. It offers programs like the Bachelor of Community Rehabilitation. You want to go into 
help people in the rehabilitation. This program is good for you. We also this community rehabilitation offers you. You can also do what we call a combined degree, where you get a bachelor of arts and psych, bachelor of arts and psychology, and a bachelor of community rehabilitation. That way, you can get a combined degree where you graduate with two degrees. The bachelor of health science is an honors only program. I did mention what I mean by honors means a research. You're doing mostly research, and at the end of your degree, you write a thesis, which is a detailed report of everything you did during your research. You can do bioinformatics, which is like study of stats in medicine as well, too, biomedical sciences, where you're studying, like doing research on different um, aspects of study. Like, let's say you want to do more infectious diseases. And if you want to study health and society, which is um, understanding relations between health and what is going on in our society as much more. That is what we have there. Like I said, it's an honors only program, which means you're doing a lot of research and you're working with people in industry and also grad. And you're also like doing a thesis right after you're done with that. So that's a lot of few things about programs that we have there. If you're thinking about doing social work, social work, you can a social work program is one you can study right after you have to do at least two years of like an undergrad degree, for instance, maybe the Bachelor of Psychology or Bachelor of Sociology. Then you take a social 201 course, then you're able to apply it to the social work program as well. Vet medicine is also a program that we offer for students, but it's only for students who are in who live in Alberta as well, too. So if you're ever thinking that you're coming from a different province, what you can do is take an undergrad level course, take the four years, live in Alberta for one year, then you can apply to vet med as well too. Those are options for students as well. So those are programs that require preferred studies that I mentioned that you can go directly into for your undergrad. Okay, let's keep going. So I did mention a few things about customizing your degree. So let's say you get into a program, your program, let's say for instance, now my major is an engineering degree, for instance. I select my major to be an engineering degree. I can customize my degree to be able to do, to like have different options, for instance. I can customize my degree to be a minor. A minor means I take like an extra eight to 10 courses or eight to 12 courses towards another form of degree. For instance, now my engineering degree could be my major, my minor, I can decide to take uh, a course, I can decide to take a minor in, um, the Bachelor of Commerce, for instance, where I can take like eight to 10, 12, eight to, eight to 12 extra courses, which will help me have that business mindset and understand more. So it's about customizing your degree towards that pathway. Or you can also do the combined degree option, which I mentioned, which for instance, an example of that is the Bachelor of Education, where you're able to graduate with two degrees, for instance, where you're able to graduate a Bachelor of Education and a Bachelor of, um, let's say for instance, if I want to become an English teacher, I can get a Bachelor of Arts in English, or I want to become a, uh, Let's say I can do a combined degree, for instance, in like the Bachelor of um, Arts. In let's say I can do a Bachelor of Arts in Sociology and a Bachelor of Commerce as well too. So in all of that, it's all about customizing your degree in your upper years. And if you want to learn more about that, the barcode on the right hand side is wonderful for you as well for those options as well. Okay, let's keep going. So now you've decided the program. Now you've decided that you want to apply to University of Calgary, for instance, now. So when you apply to University of Calgary, you are eligible to apply into two programs. Your first choice being the program you want, you really want. Your second choice being a program like that is more or less like a backup, step up option that you really would like to get into as well too. But we also recommend that second option to be of a lower academic average, for instance. So there, I'm gonna go. We're gonna speak about uh, academic averages to get into the program. So for you, if you're thinking about academic programs. Uh, let's say, for instance, now your first choice could be, let's say, like a biological sciences. It's about mid 80s to get into the program. Then we talk about, like, um, let's say, natural sciences could be a second option, which is like over mid 70s. So that's what we recommend for students who are thinking about that. But you can also choose to have your first option, first choice to be a program. Both choices could be a program you really want. We always recommend that to be the first choice being a program you really want, your second choice being a program of a low academic average that you can use to get into the programs as well. We have an application fee of 125, and we also have a fit for Canadian credentials and for 145 for international credentials. And we're going to talk about required documents soon as well too. Okay, I did mention about admission information. So we do rec we for every student there. Um, we for every student in, who's applying to the university of we look at five specific grade 12 courses, and each program differs for one another. For instance, now here's a few examples. For Bachelor of Science in Engineering, for instance, now you need an English, you need a pre-calculus, you need a chemistry, calculus, and physics. So you need five grade 12 courses. And the average of those five grade 12 courses has to be around the mid 80s to be considered for admission as well too. So that is what it is about that. We took out five specific grade 12 courses, depending on the program, the academic average, if it's around there or above, usually better to be above. 
you should will be eligible, you will be most likely eligible for admission as well too. So they're all different for every program. At the end of the presentation, I will show you, we do have a view book that I can scan, that I can show you that I can scan and you can take it on your phone. You can scan the barcode and get the view book to see the program you're interested, to see everything about the school, to see um, the academic information. But again, for each program, we look at five specific grade 12 courses, an academic average of those five, uh, of those five specific grade 12 courses. There are also some programs that require like additional requirements, for instance, Bachelor of Health Science, you need a supplemental application, which is like an essay style question. We're also looking at, um, if you were thinking about dance, music, there's an audition to get into a program. Visual studies, you require a portfolio as well too. Now, for homeschool students who are thinking about getting into programs, so how we can get those course, required courses for admissions, these are the exams or tests we recommend for students. You can take AP exams, you can take IB courses, which is international baccalaureate and courses. You can take national curriculum courses through an accredited high school. So we do make sure that the, the, that the programs that you're taking has to be from accredited, accredited school, because there are some programs that would not meet the requirements if they're not accredited from an accredited school or if the courses are not accredited. And you can also take SAT subject test as well too. So we take all your final results, we make we all the final results are usually taken from the admin, admission average that I mentioned of the five to twelve courses that we look at, and we encourage recommend students to actually take these classes as early as possible because sitting program are usually filled early, as like as early as May, and from May we begin to look at the top down, which means they were looking from averages of the highest to the lowest. So it's better to have these exams like the AP, IB to take all these courses or at least some of the courses as early as possible because you don't want to take all the five to twelve courses around like January because like we would we will make the decision based on your final results and not from like midterms as well too. So better to start early than to wait till January as well too. So if you can take the courses, there are a lot of online courses that are available. Like for instance, if you want to take like an online math course from the Ontario school board, they have that opportunity as well for students. That's why we have the national curriculum courses through accredited high school. So we look at specific grade 12 courses that are accredited for admission. Okay, document submission. So we um, we look at your transcript. So our initial transcript must be uploaded on the student center as early as possible, but the deadline is March 15, 2024. We want all your transcripts from every course that you've taken to be submitted as early as possible. And June 30th is the deadline for all your high school courses to be completed. So we don't take summer classes. We don't take any of the, uh, any, any courses at, that are not completed after June 30th, 2024. And your final um, final trans final official transcripts must be mailed and received by us. So that means for initial transcripts, you can upload them. They are PDF format. Final transcript has to be sent from the um, school board or the student board that has offered you those courses. Like for instance, if you're doing IP courses, you can go to college or um, if you're doing, you can go to college, but they can send that to us, the International Baccalaureate Program. And if you're doing AP, you can send that to us. You have to send that and it must be mailed because it has to be an original copy for confirmation. One thing I recommend for students is always to check the myucalgary.ca program, the .ca um, student center, and look at your status. Look for the programs that you have. Look for the uh, always check under your to do list to see the pro to see the um, the transcripts or documents may be missing or anything like that. To so always check your status and also to apply for awards and to register for courses as much as possible. So we will look into awards soon as well too. Okay. Now, let's say you have all the, let's say you've, you've submitted the programs and you have an offer from us. There are other conditions that need to be met. For instance, you need to maintain the average, you need to complete all the required courses, you need to submit any outstanding documents as outlined in the to-do list that I mentioned. And obviously you need to also graduate from high school as well too. Like I mentioned, always check your um, student center, which is my.ugari.ca to actually see what is going on there. The average that needs to be maintained will be sent to you around May, just to see which average you need to maintain so you don't, so that the offer that has been given to you is not rescinded as well. Okay, a few other things about academic life. I did mention a few things about the work integrated program where for a period of 12, 16 months, for instance, in the engineering and science program, you go in and you're able to like, um, go get a job, apply into a job, get work experience, get a lot of hands-on work, get, um, get opportunities, get paid as well too. There's also the option, the arts and commerce program, where you're also able to get paid, um, paid um, co-op programs as well too. 
I mentioned practicums in the nursing and education, which is usually unpaid, and it also includes the kinesiology program, and they are also very integrated with the program that you are interested in as well, too. So those are usually unpaid. If you're thinking about research, like I said, we're also a research institution. If you're thinking about research, they usually very, they usually maybe paid or unpaid, but we also want you to be able to have something in your resume, which is very, very important because you're able to graduate with the experience, the hands-on work that will help you get a job right after. I mean, the stats show that 90% of co-op graduates in Canada receive a job offer within one month of applying after because of that opportunity as well. Okay. I see someone raise their hand. Uh, if you could put your question in the Q&A box, we'll be happy to answer that for you as well. Okay. So... Another one that we, in terms of the academic programs that we offer is a study abroad program where you're able to have the opportunity to go study in a different country, get some experience, you earn credits towards your TU Calgary degree, and you're also studying at different university. Nothing changes. You don't, you pay the same University of Calgary tuition. You're just studying at different university altogether in a different country, and you're getting that work experience. You're getting that different uh, life look as well. One thing I regret during my time of university is never doing this because I could have been studying in places like Europe. You can study in South America, you can study in the USA as well too. We have over 45 countries which can we students go to in terms of getting their University of Calgary tuition. In terms of getting their University of Calgary degree, you can end the same credits towards that while studying in a different country altogether as well. Okay, that's a few about study of our program. So now let's talk about the tuition. We're very, very open and honest about like the, the cost to get into school and to stay in the school as well too. This is a bit of breakdown. On the right side there, if you want to estimate for yourself the program, in terms of living in the residence, living off campus, what we would take to be uh, to, 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 to be a University of Calgary student, the student cost estimator is a wonderful thing for students who need help in terms of that. But we also offer a lot of opportunities to help people to subsidize this, which is why we have a lot of awards so last year alone, we gave over 20, one in four students received a scholarship brochure award from us, and we paid over 20 million to the University of Calgary students alone last year alone. So let's talk about a few awards that we do offer. For instance, now we have, we have the automatic awards, which is ranges from about 2,000 to 5,000. It, it, you don't need to apply for this. We just look at your academic performance and it could be eligible for like, within that range. For instance, now, if you have an average of 95% or more on your five academic, uh, on after we take your academic um, average, you could receive $5,000 because of your academic performance. We also have the High School Entrance Awards, which is just one application. It's one application that you can apply into and it applies you for multiple awards. It's a yes or no questionnaire where you're able to get, where you're able to just answer questions. And what it does is that once you click Submit, you apply to multiple hours and you can receive as many as possible. It takes around 15 minutes and it has a deadline of March 1st, 2024. We have the prestige award, which is up to 25,000 per year. This one is one that it's, it goes for every single year of your time university. The first two are usually one-time awards. Unfortunately, the deadline for this one has passed. It was December 1st, 2023. It takes a few hours. Let's say you're applying for next year, for instance, now in 2024, for, um, for, um, for, for applying for fall 2025. You can start applying because the deadline for that will be around December 1st, 2024. It's up to $5,000 a year. It, can, you, it takes a few hours to complete. And one beautiful thing about all these awards is that you can stack all of them to pay for your tuition, your housing, your residence, and much more. And there is no award that it is out of um, your hold. So you can apply. It's free money. I encourage students to apply for free money. And you can get it. And if you don't get it, there's always the opportunity to get other ones as well while you're in the University of Calgary. There's a few other awards we can mention. Uh, there's also some external awards. If you're really interested in that, I can show you a few. I can give you a barcode that will show you the opportunities in terms of other awards that are offered from external organizations outside of the University of Calgary. All right. Now, this is where everyone I say take a picture uh, like with your phone or anything or take a screenshot on a laptop. This is a one, this is a breakdown of all the dates that are coming up and all the deadlines. They're very important to have this date so you don't miss out on them. Maybe you can set them on your calendar. Deadline for application for residents has will open on January 1st after applying for the University of Calgary. Applications have opened. And I may I recommend that the earlier you apply, the earlier you have from us. So with all your information, pay your the admission, pay the application fee as early as possible, so we can uh, we can actually start evaluating you as soon as possible as well. So that's a few things about that. 
take a picture and also please always check your student photo for any questions for any things that may be like that for any like information that may be missing or your to do in your application because we will communicate with you that through that always be in touch with your emails as well too because a lot of um information will be sent to you by email and just always make sure that you are always like in like on the on the job in terms of applications as well too okay all right so thank you very much for being as well in this presentation i will now take questions uh if you want i would recommend everyone putting their questions in the q and a box and i will answer that as well too okay all right so i see something here it says many homeschoolers do not bother to get a high school diploma but they may they meet the 30 level prerequisite requirements often with exceptional grades would they be re uh, rejected I don't think there will be, the only thing is that for the courses that they need to have, they have to be from an accredited um, high school. So some courses have, some courses may not be accredited. And unfortunately, there's nothing we can really do about that. But we do, we do have a standard admission for students in terms of applications. So we recommend that the school, the courses that they take have to be from an accredited institution and have to be from an Alberta high school diploma or an Ontario high school diploma. They have to be from a provincial like diploma and they have to be accredited. So it's not that we will reject them, it's just that they have to meet the minimum requirements of them being from an accredited institution. Okay. Uh, could you share um, information about external awards? I will put that on right now for you to just to put that. So just give me a moment, let me just quickly put that on for you. Stop sharing. All right. Okay. Thank you for your patience. Uh, this is right here. Okay. If you are looking for information about sorry, this thing is just Okay, for external awards, here is a few information. If you want to scan the barcode on the bottom here, that's the information for external awards as well too. You can go to ucalgary.ca slash awards as well too. You see all the thousands of awards that we have, including the high school, included, sorry, included the um, high school entrance awards, yes. The prestige awards, unfortunately, that had the time has passed for that and the external awards that are available. So that website, ucalgary.ca slash awards on, the, on this or the barcode, you can scan that and you will get all the awards as well too. Also, I also just wanted to make a reference that if you don't want to see our view books, if you want to like scan them or you need them, you can always reach out to us at future the students at ucalgary.ca as well. This QR code right over here, you can scan it. You can look into, um, you can scan the barcode on this right hand side, on the left hand side here, you can get the prospective client, the Canadian client. If you are an international applicant, if you also self identify as an indigenous student, we have the opportunity for that. The information is included all in this part in the, the viewbook here. So it's best for everyone if you want to scan the barcode, you can scan the barcode there and you can get a lot of information using the viewbooks as well, too. Let me answer this next question. So,
the AQA admission. That's the um it says many in the high school community are under the impression that they're only in the courses. Yes, we are on for uh, yes, if you do have the courses required for admission, like if you do have the five required courses, I don't think you it disqualifies you from applying to university, generally speaking. We just recommend make sure that it's better to always have the diploma, but if you do have the five required courses, you can still apply and uh, you can still be eligible if you do have the marks in as well for that. And for the EQA admission, uh, that is um, for EQA, let me just quickly get the EQA uh, information for that. I think it's for the uh, equity and division. Get that for you. I can put the link as well for that in the chat. I'm just going to get that for you. So we have the equi equitable and inclusive admission process. So I can put that uh, the link here as well for that in the chat and you should be able to get that as well. Okay. Are there any other questions that anyone may have? I would like to mention that if you are, as far as you have the grade, the five specific grade 12 courses, it is okay not to have a full, I, I just have to make sure that it is from an, uh, a required, it is from an accredited institution. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. If there are no other questions, you yeah, uh, thank you for coming into the presentation today. Uh, I if you want to stay back, if you still want to ask any questions, if you still want to wait to the end, that's okay. But everyone is free to go at this point. Uh, you just if you have any questions, we are here to have. We're happy to stay along with you to just answer the remaining questions as well too. Okay. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Uh, if you are, how can we check if the institution is accredited? So the institution, in terms of accreditation from the institution, as far it is, if it is from, uh, if it is under the Alberta or the provincial, um. If it's from the provincial Alberta, it's from the provincial um institution. If it's from a provincial like accredited institution, that's how you know it's accredited. It just means that is is it from a school that is recognized from the university or recognized as an accredited institution? Because there are some schools that may that don't that offer the courses but may not be accredited. So you can check online to see if that as well. And we we also have uh, the link online for that. I'll see if I can get that for um, in terms of accreditation for students, for school institutions.
there are no other questions, I will be happy to help that. The person that asked about their credit institution, if you could email me and feature the students at University at UCalgary, I'll be happy to talk more about that. If any of the information I can put, the, I'll put in the chat the email for everyone to reach out to us. And if you are, uh, if you if you're from a different, if you're in a province, different province as well too, we have our own provincial email. I will also put a link for that in the chat for all the recruiters and the, our contact information. So if you ever want to reach out to us, we'd be happy to help you with that as well. So thank you guys for coming in again. I will, before I leave, I'll just put the information about the our, our recruiting team. So that you can reach out to the um you can reach out to the recruiter that is specific to your um region and someone will be happy to help you out as well. Thank you once again for coming in. If there are no other questions, uh if there are no other questions, I'll be I I would I could just I can. If there are no questions, you can always reach out to us and we're happy to help you out.